After receiving your LS100 crate from Customs, you should remove the packet of important documents. Complete the rig packing checklist to make sure you received all the items shipped to you. Find the mobilization checklist. This will identify the materials and supplies you need to acquire before you proceed to the job site. This includes such things as the bentonite, water barrels, casing, fuel, oil, chlorine, and other tools and supplies needed. The responsibility for this checklist belongs to the tool pusher, who is the crew foreman, and is also responsible for crew operations, keeping the well construction report, mobilization checklist, rig packing checklist, care, cleaning, and storage of the drilling equipment and tools, and return of all tools, excess materials, and drilling equipment. If filter pack is unavailable, you can grade your own by using two screens. The top screen removes large gravel, and the bottom screen allows the fine gravel to separate from the desired filter pack. After the checklist have been completed and the materials and supplies have been packed, you're ready to go to the job site. After arriving at the location, you should first lay out the site as in Figure 5 of your well construction reference manual. For safety purposes, you should first rope off the drill site, making sure there is adequate workspace. This helps prevent curious onlookers from the potential dangers of the work area and helps keep the drill team from being distracted. While the pits are being dug, water can be collected. These jobs are directed by the helper, whose duties are organizing and instructing local labor and digging the pits, gathering water, shoveling cuttings, and keeping the strainer clean. He also is responsible for informing and ensuring spectator safety and maintaining the pumping equipment. If the soil is porous or very sandy, you may also want to line the pits with plastic sheeting to prevent water loss. Next, dig a narrow trench approximately two feet in length from the settling pit to where the borehole is to be drilled. At this point, you are now ready to set up your drilling equipment. Place the base over the end of the narrow trench that extends to the settling pit and install the stabilizer tubes. This stabilizes the LS100 while a mast and rotary are being assembled. Tie down the mast with the three 25-foot ropes provided and level the LS100 in two directions. Now you're ready to install the rotary with the two bolts provided. Before starting the rotary or the mud pump, the assistant driller should check the fuel and oil in the engines, the oil in the rotary gear case, and make sure there is water in the pump end of the mud pump. The assistant driller's responsibilities include servicing the equipment, making and breaking connections, assisting in the operation and maintenance of the LS100, collecting and organizing cutting samples, organizing the drill site, and monitoring the mud levels. Connect the suction hose to the side port of the mud pump and place the red foot valve strainer in the suction pit. Connect one end of the discharge hose to the top port of the mud pump and the other to the side port of the three-way valve. The red downhole delivery hose is connected from the swivel port to the top port of the standpipe. The bypass hose from the bottom port of the three-way valve to the mud mixer. Start the mud pump to establish circulation to the suction pit and mix mud if needed. Now start the rotary and raise it with the winch. The lead driller is now ready to start drilling the borehole. His responsibilities include supervising the drill site, operating the LS100, monitoring circulation, evaluating mud, identifying formations, instructing the assistant driller, training, and supervising the helpers. The pilot hole is drilled first with a 3 and 7 eighths bit. 
This is done to locate the aquifer. The cutting samples are taken every length of drill pipe and every time a formation changes. This information is written on the drill log and is used to indicate the location of the screen in the borehole. The driller now increases the throttle to rotate the quill while the assistant driller dopes the pin. The rotary is raised and the drill pipe with the pilot bit is attached. The driller then lowers the bit through the table and the assistant driller engages the slips to help start the borehole straight. The driller uses the three-way valve to change the direction of mud circulation from the suction bit to the bit. When mud is flowing through the bit, he increases the rotary speed using the throttle. When the drilling mud slows or stops coming out of the borehole while drilling, this indicates lost circulation. The most common causes for this are a clogged suction strainer, a blocked borehole, a crimped hose, or a porous formation allowing excessive amounts of mud to escape. To correct these conditions, refer to the well construction reference manual. When the rotary reaches the table, the shuttle will rest on the stops. Allow sufficient time for the cuttings in the borehole to clear. When the assistant driller can no longer feel cuttings coming out of the borehole, the driller diverts the mud flow back to the pit with the three-way valve, raises the pipe to clear the breakout lugs past the table, and the assistant engages the slips. The driller then lowers the drill pipe so that the breakout lugs engage the slips, and the assistant, using the hex spanner on the breakout nut, rotates the quill counterclockwise until the pipe drops free and the driller raises the rotary to the top and dopes the quill pin for another jointed drill pipe. The assistant dopes the pin of the next drill pipe, threads it to the one suspended in the slips and prepares to pull the slips while the driller stabs the rotary threads and raises so the assistant can pull the slips. The driller then diverts the mud flow from the suction pit back to the bit down hole, waits for the circulation to reestablish, and begins the drilling again. Note, caution should be taken when operating the winch in neutral position. The driller should always have a hand on the brake, should the hand on the crank slip. Cutting samples are taken by the assistant and logged by the tool pusher until the water formation is found. At this point, the mud is stabilized and made thick enough to hold the borehole open while the drill pipe is withdrawn. To pull the drill pipe, the rotary must be unthreaded, moved up past the three-way valve where the hinge pin bolt is removed from the driller side, and the rotary is swung to the left, lowered to rest on the three-way valve. This allows the pipe to be pulled unobstructed. The drill pipe is pulled with the use of two C-span wrenches that grip the pipe when lifted. The driller and his assistant stand on opposite sides of the LS100 and lift the pipe together. At the top of the lift, the person holding the top wrench holds while the person on the bottom wrench slides his C-wrench down. He holds while the person on the top wrench slides his down. When pulling the pipe by hand, the C-wrenches should not be removed from the pipe and the slips should stay engaged except for passing a tool joint. A mistake at this point could result in dropping the drill pipe down the borehole. It is always recommended to do this process slowly until all members of the team are very familiar with their duties. C-span wrenches should be placed beneath the tool joints and rested on the slips while the joint is being unthreaded. Should this joint be extremely tight, a sharp wrap with the rig hammer will loosen the joint. Once the drill pipe is removed, the borehole should be covered with a board or a shovel. It is now time to start reaming the borehole. First, remove the pilot bit by hitting the back side of the bit blade and unthreading by hand. The rotary is then repinned into place and raised. Start the rotary and connect the drill pipe with the reamer and pilot bit. Remove the cover from the borehole. Start the mud pump. Divert the mud flow from the suction pit to the bit. 
wait until circulation is established and the borehole is full of mud to begin the reaming. The reaming is done the same as drilling the pilot hole. Should the swivel start leaking, it is very important to stop the leak. There is usually sand and grit in the mud, and leaks indicate the mud is passing seals in the swivel. If this is allowed to continue, it will cause premature wear on the quill and destroy the seals. When the reaming is complete, the mud should be stabilized to prevent caving prior to the installation of the screen in the casing. If there is no manufactured screen available, you can make your own by slotting a piece of casing with a hacksaw. Make a series of cuts approximately a quarter inch apart on three sides of the casing. To install the screen, glue a cap on the bottom and a collar on the other end. To ensure good glue joints, you should sand the casing and the collar, apply the cleaner, apply the glue to both pieces, couple together, and twist a quarter of a turn. By drilling a short sheet metal screw through the collar, but not all the way through the casing, you improve the quality of the glue joint. The screen is placed in the borehole so that it will be positioned in the water bearing sand zone. The casing should glide down the borehole without having to force it. Should you encounter a blockage, you must withdraw the casing and redrill the borehole. As you add joints of casing, you should repeat the procedure, allowing a few minutes for the glue to dry before lowering. When joining the last joint of casing, you should attach a rope to hold the casing in the event you miscalculated the depth of the borehole. Lower the last casing to the bottom. Measure, raise, and saw off the casing to fit just below the table. Once the screen and casing are in the borehole, add chlorine to the clean barrels of water that are standing by for flushing. Place the suction hose from the suction pit into a barrel and disconnect the bypass hose from the mud mixer. Start the mud pump and flush the hose with clean, chlorinated water. Assemble the casing flush tool and thread a jointed drill pipe on it. Thread the drill pipe to the quill and guide the casing flush tool over the top of the casing. Restart the mud pump, establish circulation into the barrels, and then gradually open the three-way valve. The chlorinated water then enters the borehole by going through the casing and out the screen. This will force any mud and cuttings to flow up the annulus and into the pit. When the water is clean coming out of the borehole, you may shut off the mud pump and disconnect the drill pipe from the quill. Leave the flushing tool on the casing and plug the hole with a clean rag. You may then remove the rig from over the well and pour in the gravel. This forms a filter pack around the screen. Backfill with cuttings to form a barrier on top of the filter pack, and after backfilling, you may mix a liquid slurry of Portland cement and water and seal the annulus to the surface. Allow this seal to set and then develop the well using the baler. The baler tripod is assembled with two or more joints of drill pipe on each of its three pins. The 100 foot of quarter inch poly rope is threaded through the pulley. The tripod is then positioned over the well and the baler is tied on. The baler is placed into the well and lowered to the water level. As the baler is worked up and down to surge the aquifer, it brings the fine sands through the screen. This process is continued until the well is baled clean and clear of turbidity. After baling is finished, the pump pad is constructed around the well. The forms are placed and leveled. Block or rocks are put in the bottom to raise the rebar off of the ground. The rebar is tied and the concrete is poured, leveled, and allowed to set up. 